during the days of slavery, it was thought that the black man was incapable of being educated. Even after slavery, only white people and a few wealthy blacks had access to education. It was only in 1962 that free education was introduced to all. The children of the Deacons area and surrounding districts became the beneficiaries of this free education. Before there was a Deacons primary school, the area was completely covered with sugarcane and the road leading to the area was like a swamp where you found lots of frogs and birds etc. That's the name Birds River Gap. The government purchased the land that the school is presently on from a gentleman by the name of Mr. Cry and uh, he had a shop at the entrance of the school. The school was built to accommodate children of the area because then we had the children from the farm after that housing area was built you had quite a few children from Brandon's and quite a few from Goodland therefore it was thought that it was necessary to have a school in this area I was among the first pupils of the school I came from Westbury because then to supplement the number or the role of the school children were transferred from Westbury and from Eagle Hall Primary to supplement the number here at Deacons. The school was opened in 1964 by Mrs. Carolyn Barrow, the wife of the late Errol Walton Barrow. We started with a role of about 465 students and the first principal was Miss Gwendolyn Winter. She was a real strict look for discipline and uh, we had to conform or not we were severely punished. Things like lateness, being untidy, having untidy books was a no-no. I can remember that for the first 10 years of the life of the school it was as though it had just received a coat of paint because there were absolutely no marks on the walls. We were able to keep it clean and by her work and the work of the teachers we maintained a very high standard of keeping our surroundings clean, of keeping the academic standards at a very very high level. At that time you never heard much about zoning and taking children from the catchment area. So children came from as far as Christ Church all over the island. So we had a vast population of, of different students from different areas and so the standard, the academic standard was extremely high and it was a school to be reckoned with at that time. During the years, I would have worked as a student, then I left, went on to secondary school, and then at the age of 17, I came back to this very place as a teacher. After spending a year, then I went to Erdison College, and I came back then as a trained teacher, and I worked right up until the time I became senior teacher of the school. I would have worked with a number of principals, Mr. Trotman, Ms. Brathwaite, Mrs. Warrior, Mrs. King. And uh, although I've remained in, in this place for quite a few years, because of their different styles of leadership, I would have learned a lot. And I would have seen some improvement in place sometimes, some declines in some areas as different managerial approaches are folded. Okay, so I, I would have learned a lot from the various principles. Then I left, I went on to be principal at Carrington's Primary, which is no more as amalgamated with Erdiston Primary to form George Lamy. And then he was asked to come back home according to one of the officers in the Ministry of Education. We are sending you back home, meaning 
they were sending me back to Deacons, which I readily accepted. So I came back and I became principal of Deacons Primary. I've tried extremely hard to set high standards to work with the children. I know that there is a stigma attached to the school, which is of great concern to me because before people even come to the school, they have preconceived ideas of things they think that are happening here, which most of the time, they're not true, they're not right. So when they come then and they see, then they have to change that opinion, okay? But I've tried hard, I've tried to work with the children because many of them come with many challenges because of their home situation. And if you do not understand that or appreciate that, then you become extremely frustrated at their behavior, at their lack of discipline, at their um, inability to do what is required of them. But it all stems from the home and the things that are not provided for them in the home. So from the time I came to the school, I did a needs assessment and I came to the conclusion that we have to go the extra mile in order to provide for these children. I've also sought to reach out to the parents. Many of them confide in me and I would have tried to help them in many ways. Many of the children at Deacons, they, they come from just a home with the mother. So then the male teachers are encouraged to start to make up for the lack of a, a male um, role model in the lives of the children and they try really really hard. I love the children I try to meet all their needs physical physical needs, psychological needs, spiritual needs we have started a program whereby they go to church um, at least two times a week to meet with Pastor Paul and to discuss the, um, things concerning the Bible and to get some moral education because that church, the church we provide for them is the only one that they know, seeing that many of them do not go to church. So we try to keep them on track and by doing that. All of the competitions, whatever is available out there that can help these children and enhance what we are doing here, we make a great effort to have them participate. So thus we've participated in many spelling competitions, general knowledge. We have participated in things like Kiddies Kodumont since I've been here. We've been involved three years, I think, and uh, we have worked really hard. We have won some fantastic prizes. We've gotten some money and so. So all to the benefit and to uplift the children and the morale of the place. I've worked with many good teachers. They, they understand um, my vision for the school and they have worked with me and we've tried to you know to, to achieve the goals that we would have set not only for ourselves but also for the children and for the parents. attended Deacons from 1974 and left in 1981. I remember when I first came to school, I had already been to about two or three nursery schools. So I was the ripe old age of five years old. And when I came to school, I was the principal at that time, Mrs. Danielle. She told my mother, we don't have a nursery here. You think this is a nursery? This is a primary school. Why don't you take her back home? And she was looking at me as if I was a baby. But as I said, I was a big girl in my eyes. Um, Mrs. Danielle was the principal. 
And then when she left, I remember another principal, a tall, stately lady, Mrs. King, was her name. Um, throughout my years at Deacons, I have so many memories. Um, but what really stood out in my head, uh, what stands out in my head really is the radio program that we used to uh, go to another classroom to listen to our science, to do our science lessons. Um, I don't remember the name of the program, but I remember we had a radio fusion at the school and we used to go to the classroom to do the science. And uh, also, in my class, when I was in class three and four, um, we used to do read from the Reader's Digest, a very interesting book, and it really exposed us to a wide vocabulary. And we used to do this story in the Reader's Digest called Drama in Real Life. And uh, another thing I remember too from my school days, at one point in time, there was a law made. When you see a teacher on the corridor or going down the stairs or up the stairs, we had to stand to the side and give the teacher free reign to travel. And this was to avoid any accidents. And I think that's also um, speaking to the tune of being respectful so that you would not be rushing along on your way and bouncing into a teacher so you give that teacher the um, the highway more or less to do whatever he or she wanted to do and uh, I think that's it my graduation was the bomb we had graduation in the school hall and I remember we did a skit on Muhammad Ali and graduation in those days we wore white white dresses with a red band and the boys had their um bow ties uh, we didn't have to wear the uniform or anything like that and we dressed up and we didn't have to go to pay for any hall or any conference room or whatever the thing everything was in house and although it was in-house, it was very, very good. It was well attended and we had a great time. That's, in a nutshell, a little bit of my life at Deacon's Primary School as a student. My fondest memory as a past student is NIFCA and on Fridays. I'll tell you about NIFCA first because our teacher for NIFCA was Miss Lorna Bino, and she was very specific in what she wanted done. So when we go to NIFCA, we would practice very, very hard, and we would work every detail out of the actions and everything that we have to do. When we go to NIFCA, everybody would be buttoned down totally from the top. You wear this little black bow, and your little blue shirt, and your uniform, socks up to the knees, the boys are all tucked in and every single teacher from this school would have attended NIFCA with us. We'd stand outside and while we're standing outside waiting for our turn to go on stage, everybody would be like trembling and the teachers would be pacing back and forth making us even more nervous but it would not affect the task that we had at hand which was to perform. Then we go, we get on stage, we set up in our lines and we get ourselves all ready and we can see the teachers outside pacing up and down, up and down. It didn't make us really that nervous though because we knew what we had to do. However, some of the other schools that were there waiting to perform were nervous because when we got there, they would be like, oh my God, Deacon's Primary, Deacon's Primary because we were known for NIFCA. So we would perform and everything would go really, really well. And when we come off stage, that was the best part. The teachers would hug us and kiss us and say, you guys did really well, it was excellent. And Cynthia Wilson, who was in charge at that time, would come outside and actually shake our hands. We felt highly recommended. We felt important, we felt dignified, it was great.
my best memory though would be on Fridays because each, each student would be assigned to have a desk and every Friday you will have to bring what we consider to be pretty clothes, a pants and a shirt obviously, and you would take your desk downstairs and put it on the playing field and you would have to scrub that desk. So what we did is that we would put our desk in line and everybody would be like scrub it, scrub it, scrub it to see whose desk would be the prettiest at the end of the day. So we scrub them, we leave them out in the sun and we come back and when we get back and the teacher would inspect and she say, okay, so and so, so and so, this desk is the prettiest and we go like, yeah. Now, as a past student here at Deacons, I can remember when we did our own um, maintenance of the school. Not that it wasn't a janitor, but we used to help out by taking all the furniture downstairs, turn our uniforms inside out, take off our shoes and socks, and we would spend the morning or the afternoon cleaning furniture. And by the time we were finished, they were really, really shining, and then we would take them back to the classroom. So that's one good memory that I have of us helping ourselves here at Deacons when we were little. Of course, that doesn't happen today. Students now depend on the janitors to do everything in the classroom for them in terms of cleaning. And the other um, memory that comes to mind is the fact that we were served the milk and biscuits. Now, nowadays, we might you know, brush away the milk and biscuits, but in those days, milk and biscuits were the nicest tasting things you could have on a, every morning during break time. And we could quite look forward to the, the janitor, stroke, school meal worker, stroke, everything that um, was done in the school by a lady called Daphne. She was the one who would serve us the milk and biscuits some mornings, and then sometimes we got the opportunity to go help her do the wash up of the cups and so on. But, but that wasn't very often, that was more for the big children. But those are the two memories that stand out in terms of my stay here at Deacon's Primary School. As a young teacher, when I first came to Deacons, I must say I was very afraid. The principal was a very, has a very strong personality. And when she came, when she came to the classroom, you always felt not sure of yourself. And when she got there, she would always like go to the board and try to get the children to read what you had, ask them questions. The fun of everybody understood, and it was a way when they look back on it to help me to understand what you had to do. And I've gone through the years by watching her as she went through the paces with her children. It was just a subtle way, but in the end, it paid off. Today, now, when young people come, they don't want to listen. So they have a lot, they have create some problems for themselves. But they should listen and ask questions if they're not sure what to do, don't sit down and do the wrong thing because it will hurt the people's children in the long run. Uh, principles are very strong. They were afraid to tell the parents where to get off down to come to school and you know, they went to the, um, the gate to tell the vendors when to stop selling and things like that. The children came to school early back then. They were they would run if the bell rang, but nowadays they just walk as though they don't care. Children were afraid to run in the corridor or make noise in the classroom when they first came to Deacons. But now they just fight, play, do what they have to do as though they don't care. I attended Deacons Primary School from 1982 until 1993, where I sat the common entrance and went on to Christchurch Foundation School and thereafter St. Ursula's. During my years at Deacon's Primary, the principal would have been Mrs. King, and my most favorite teachers would have been Mr. Kamabach, Miss Aline, and also Miss Mahan. One of the most memorable experiences for me would have been the confidence and the support I received from the teachers when I was selected to be the deputy head girl while I was in class four. However, the most memorable experience for me would have been how nurturing the teachers were, ensuring that each pupil was well looked after and they basically had our best interests at heart. I am proud to say that I was a student of Deacon's Primary and I have benefited tremendously as it has set the foundation for me to press on and excel. 
I had the most wonderful teachers ever. And two of them, they really stand up in my memory. And that is Miss Christine Harewood and Miss Ida Mae Denny. It is having, it was because of having their love and their care. They were like my mothers. And when I felt that love and saw that love, it really prompted me to be a teacher. And from way back then, I've always wanted to be a teacher so that I can get a chance to give that love and feel the love. And that's, that's, that's why today I am a teacher. When I first came here, there was more amicable. Uh, dedicated to the children's cause, we're always behind them. Whatever we had here, we see the parents behind the children who were uh, outdoor activities, whatever it was. They were here now. They always dressed appropriately. I guess they felt that the school was an important place. And when they came, they were always dressed. They dressed well, they spoke well, they carried themselves in a decent manner. There was never any bad behavior. Today, you now we find that the younger parents, they don't care, they come in the short pants. They're very disrespectful. They don't even, they're not even taking time out to spend enough time with your children to train them the right way. That's one of our greatest problems. We're seeing it in the classrooms. With the indiscipline. Let me hear you read it. Let me hear you. Yes. I am presently the William teacher of Vickers Primary School and I get to work with children from A B, B right up to class 4 and I, I find that the children have various problems. Some children might have problems in retaining, some might have problems with comprehending, some of them can be can be very well, they can call out the big words and read for me and then when I question them about, about, about what they have read, they, they, they look in the sky as though they cannot refer back to the book. I have to encourage them to refer back to the book. So that is something that I would like, that I'm, I'm working hard on to get children so to improve their reading skills. Sometimes what I do, I have to stop them in, in uh, every paragraph. Those, those, those particular children, I have to stop at each paragraph for them to give me um, the topic sentence and so on. They get an idea that, 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 that when they're reading, they are, you are getting a message. Some children I might give homework to, I may say, well, okay, we're going to read this page tomorrow or so. And I say, read page five to seven or whatever. And when, when I see them again, I ask, um, have you done your homework? And I know there is a note there from the expression on the faces. I would like parents to encourage their children to read a bit more at home. And they can do that uh, for the small ones, they can probably label some of the things in the house. For for the bigger ones, they can just they can just sit down with them. You, you can start at 15 minutes. Maybe, maybe, maybe you see how important and important it is. You might be encouraged even to go another 15 minutes back. Encourage them to read and then ask them what they have read a book and so on. Let them know that reading is very important and some, sometimes it can be a story. Some, some of you can read them too and you can um, use the dialogue, you can make faces, you can do your puppets, you can do whatever to make it fun. Um, even like, like sometimes when you take them on tours, you can ask them to read the signs. If they go to the supermarket, you can ask them to read the signs as well. And you can also have some reading games where we really we, we get a chance to um, to win because they like to um, to compete. They so so they're they're learning and having fun at the same time. I came to this school in 1993. At that time, I had a class on my first A2. That was my first class. But what I was um, most impressed with is that the children were very keen about reading. There was a teacher there by the name of Patricia Springer. She had a library set up in her classroom. 
and when the when her class go for games or other two activities, children will come in at scheduled times to barbells. She had a very um, nice filing system where you, where you can record the books that you borrow and bring them back. Later, a classroom, which is presently the computer lab, that was sacrificed so that we can have the school can have a whole library room where the children can come in at different times, lunchtime, anytime, and they can borrow us and so on. But in 2000, the year 2000, when the school was in, a phase, in the first phase of, of um, technology, we had to sacrifice that same room to get the, sacrifice the library in order to get the computer, to put the computer lab set up. Um, we were happy um, to get the computers and so on, but we were very disappointed that we were that we had to sacrifice our library. Then, um, Miss Husband, who was in charge of the computer lab at that time, asked if we can properly select a timetable time so that the children can still come in and borrow books. So that is what we did. That's what we did for a while. So it means that once the children are not using a lab, children will come here at 20 other times to borrow books and so on. We wanted to get more books from the library and we decided that we will start a reading club. And that club was called Reading Spring. And the spring in that club, in that name came from I decided that I would use um, Springer, Spray from Springer. Um, I remember sometime Miss Springer, she had prayers and she was talking about, about the spring in her name and that sort of thing. So that motivated me to name the club Reading Spring. Um, to join Reading Spring, ch children were encouraged to borrow, um, to donate used books, about one or two. And that started for a while, but then at the time, the, the, the air was just enjoying me this spring, so whether you had, had donated books or not, they were all welcome. Many times we were promised a library, and um, somehow that did not work out uh, for some reason or other. Like, I guess when it comes to um, economics and so on, but for our 50th anniversary, we are hoping that we will get a library and I, 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 I can just imagine the kids from school with a library again where we can go in and borrow but I find that at this primary school when you um, talk to the children you will hear everybody saying I have a tablet at, at some time I say everybody say what everybody want a tablet and when when they ask them what do you do with your tablet they will all say uh, we play games but I want I still believe in the in, in having the real book um, to motivate interest and so and see the importance of the book and so you can learn a lot from just reading. Um, I read in spring we do many activities to encourage reading. We might we might do crossword puzzles, we might do we, we may ask the children to do book reports and many things they were from the classroom setting so that they would see that really could be fun. Here yeah, at Deacon's Primary, uh, we try to expose all the children to a lot of sports and disciplines. Uh, right now, we're involved in cricket, football, netball, we do swimming, we do lawn tennis, we do road tennis. Um, so we basically try to get the children exposed to a lot of sports before they go into the to the secondary school. Um, our sports program, however, a uh, lot, a lot of support, especially financial support. So we try to do a lot of fundraisers uh, within the school to help push the sports in terms of transportation, equipment, and stuff like that. Um, a major letdown here also is um, the parent support in terms of getting the children to the after school programs and um, helping them to go to other clubs 
so they could bring the experience back to school and that is school in the whole. Um, we have done pretty well in football. Uh, last tournament we only lost one game, however, we didn't go all the way to the finals, but uh, I thought that was a good effort with, with the footballers. Net bars also uh, had a good showing, being it the first thing that uh, the most of the girls ever played that ball. They actually won um, two of the, the four games that they played. Um, in World Tennis, uh, we had a bit of success. Unfortunately, we, we, we got to the quarterfinals and then we couldn't uh, finish the tournament because of uh, persons being ill and stuff. So we had to forfeit the quarterfinals. Um, cricket is still uh, we're in progress. Um, and the track and field, we had one major um, athlete in Malakai Harris. We had done the school pro, and Barry Willis pro. Um, he was the CUT champion, uh, most valuable uh, athlete in, at that meet. And that was this year, early this year. Uh, however, in this year, I'm not sad. Uh, he was way below his um, peak, not performing to the best of his ability um, due to lack of training and stuff like that. Uh, but he had broken records through the school, uh, through his age group coming up. Uh, had done very well in the, on the 11s last year and that's that dominated that, that meet too. Uh, it's unfortunate that he couldn't bring his, his peak performance again this year to have this school again. some genres that they may not have necessarily been aware of and so we had various workshops where they were introduced to one such genre as dubstep where we had someone come in and explain what dubstep was and he also showed them manually how to lay a trap. We would have also invited bands, one in particular Nexus, who would have come and would have spoken to the children about the music industry as a career and also we would have done research on various local Barbadian artists such as the Mighty Gabby, Wendy Aline. We would have also looked at the Troubadours International, just to name a few. The Out of this came the Deacon's Primary School Choir. We went to NIFCA, just last NIFCA, and we placed third. It was their first time entering on this level, and I think they did pretty well. And we would have congratulated them time and time again also. Since then, we would have gone to the Bridgetown Court where we would have serenaded various tourists as they came into the island. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue, 
The school would have worked under the ACF Kiddies Kaduma Band Schools Project. We would have been ably assisted by Ms. Suzanne Phillips, the officer at the ACF. Our band leader was Ms. Darmory Allen, a teacher at our school, and we would have been ably assisted by other teachers, parents, and students in making and completing our costumes. 2011 would have been our most successful year with the band All Watertown. We would have won Best Historical Band. We would have won the Inter-American Year of Culture Award, BMA Brands of Barbados Award, second in school bands, and second in topical categories. In the year that we did Mecca Sport in BIM, we would have won second in school band category and we would have placed in the topical category. In the 2013 band, Peace Joint on Pani Rock, we would have placed second in school bands overall. I was in charge of the section called the Royal Barbados Police Force Mounted Police Section. The kids had actual horses that we made for the, the band as their costumes and they were decked in red and white with black pants and they had their little hats on and they would keep moving the, the, the donkeys or the horses heads up and down because you know a horse doesn't keep quiet. So they would keep moving them up and down. And fortunately for us, we had a photo in the paper. I felt so proud of them. That year, Deacon's Primary won, and I'll give you a few of the awards that were significant in my opinion. UNESCO World Heritage Award, we won that. We also won the BMA Brand of Barbados Awards. We won the Best Historical Band and we won the Inter-American Year of Culture Award. The only thing that was missing, people, the only thing was the queen of the band. Unfortunately, our queen did not make it to the stadium on time, and so therefore she was not able to perform. But that didn't stop us. We won lots of awards that I consider to have been coveted and significant, and it made us proud. school to be totally eradicated and that people give credit to the place and to the work of people who would have worked extremely hard to make the school the place that it should be. Education does not come easily and with it comes a great price. I want the children to to hunger for education, to go all out to make sure that they get their education, don't waste they change their attitudes and so become the best that they could be and to, to grow, to grow in faith, to grow in goodness and to make Barbados a better place.